What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 13 and today what a big episode we have with Aston Villa. Uh, our final two games of January and the first one is huge. It's the second leg of our Carabao Cup semi-final tie as we take on Sean Dyche's Burnley away at Turf Moor and after the thrilling end to the first leg I'm sure this is going to be just an amazing game as well. Uh, and then our second game is uh, a tough one away at Bramwell Lane to take on Sheffield United plus you're going to see transfer deadline data Day, and hopefully one or two more signings as well because as you we look at the budget to begin with you can see we've got 3.8 mil in the transfer budget 159 grand in the wage budget where we're at a 50 50 split if we were looking to sign a player permanently today, we could probably get someone around £6 million if we were lucky on about 61 grand a week wages. That's probably if we're going to down, go down the, uh, the signing route of a permanent player to straight away. But in the last episode, I asked you guys for transfer targets. Lots of you guys gave me great suggestions. Thank you very much for that. And most of the suggestions were for pre-contract players. So I think we're going to play that game as we end the window. And we might be able to sign one or two more, play, uh, more players on, uh, on free transfers as well. But uh, the first game, is Burnley. It is the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. We won the first leg 2-1. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a dilemma on our hands heading into the game at Turf Moor. We've got an unfit first 11 that played in the first leg. And I'm not entirely sure what lineup I'm going to pick for one of the biggest games of this season. This is going to be a tough decision. Well, the competition really coming to a boil now, of course. Just four teams left. And the scene is set for a great game between two of them here. Which side will get through to the final? We'll find out very shortly. And it's live. So this is it. Lineup picked for the game. And I'm feeling confident after our 2-1 victory in the first leg of progressing to the final. But if Burnley do score, we'll need to score tonight as well. Uh, we are lining up with a 3-5-2 heading into the game. And this is our team. Johnson in goal. Back three are James Chester, Dale Fry and Eric Palmer Brown. And the midfield five is Henry on the left, Elmore on the right. I think they're going to be crucial in this game as players will contribute on defense as well as when going forward. And Huri Hain and the captain Yedinak in the DM area. Jack Grealish gets the non the Cam Rowland and Dempsey's on the bench. But up top together, they both scored on the weekend. Jonathan Coggia and Ben Brereton, both in fine form this season. So the players are in the huddle. This is it. It's the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. Can we get to Wembley in our first ever cup competition? Come on. In the last few rounds, I really was not fussed. When the competition started, I was like, meh, don't really care about the Carabao Cup. Just feel the weakened team. But after knocking out Newcastle, after knocking out Swansea, I, I, just, I got a lot more confident about chances of possibly going all the way and uh, and certainly to the final and what a start to the game Jack Grealish justifies his start by making it 1-0 from range that must have took a deflection and deceived Tom Heaton because it was a good effort but it shouldn't have beaten him from that far out and already just three minutes in we have the early goal that we may well have needed tonight quick ball by Yedinak into Grealish gets it out of his feet takes a couple of touches actually I don't think it does take a touch it might have deflected off the number six, but I don't think it does. We'll have a look here. Does it? No, I think it just goes straight in. I think it just goes straight in, and Heaton is beaten from range and didn't even dive. What a decision to start, Jack Grealish. One nil Aston Villa. What a fantastic beginning. This is perfect. You know, sometimes you see the name flash above the heads of the players. Uh, but it doesn't always take a deflection. And I don't think that shot took a deflection at all. The ball didn't spin in midair. It didn't change direction or anything like that. I think he was just taken back by surprise by Grealish's early ambitious effort. And we have the early advantage and lead 15 minutes in. What a start to this game here at Turf Moor. Sam Vokes on the ball for Burnley. Gives it to Goodmanson. And he's tackled by Hurry Hain. We'll give it to Grealish. Back towards Yedinak. Now through to Brereton. As we look to build a chance here. 33 minutes in for a second goal. Elmo trying to release Benny Boy. He's controlled it well. He's found Jonathan Coggia. Who's found the back of the net. Burnley nil. Aston Villa 2. We have our second away goal. 10 minutes before half time. So one more than Burnley. They'll now need to score four goals on the night. And I have to say, I'm feeling very, very confident now. Heat and beaten once again. This time there was definitely no deflection. Brereton to Coggia. Holds off his man and drills it home. And are we heading to Wembley for the first time in this series in our first ever cup competition? This definitely makes up for the embarrassing collapse away at Burton Albion. Let's not think the job is done just yet, though. Burnley, a very good team in really, really good form. 
but tonight they have just not showed up when they're so good at home. And uh, we've put two past a really good defensive side. This has been a great performance. We knew our game plan tonight. We stuck to it. And as we lead by two, Grealish has got one of them. Goes for goal and puts it just wide the post. What a decision to start Jack Grealish. Two episodes ago, there was a comment, and I discussed it in the last one, saying you've got to play Jack Grealish more. I agree. Dempsey's been in such good form, but Grealish definitely deserves to start a lot more games. And that will do it for a textbook first staff. We lead at Turf Moor by two goals to nil. No wonder the fans are in good boys half the game to go and unless Burnley can score four goals we're heading to Wembley for our first ever Carabao Cup final where we'll most likely meet Spurs we'll be the underdogs for that game we'll be the underdogs for the past three rounds though and that's things going to get through them all well that is going to do it what a bizarre second half nothing's gone on whatsoever but I don't really mind because there is the final whistle and that confirms it Burnley nil Aston Villa 2 4-1 on aggregate and we are into the Carabao Cup final in our first season what an achievement for this young Aston Villa team. We played a B team in every single round apart from this one. We knocked out three Premier League teams. We're there, baby. We're heading to Wembley. I have to say, it was a really bizarre game, though. Burnley that needed to score. They had shots, but none of them were convincing. I can't think of one that was highlight worthy. Maybe there was when I'm watching it back and I'll include it for you. I can't think of any that really caused Sam Johnson too much of a sweat. But 2-0 the final score, and we are through. And man of the match to Grealish for that wonderful goal he scored in the first five minutes. But also shout out Rico Henry and El Mohamedy. Put those guys on the wide midfield areas in this game. So I was wary of Burnley's threat when whipping balls into the centre with the height they have in the middle. And they were fantastic in this 3-5-2. So Aston Villa through to the Carabao Cup final. Final. We'll most likely take on Spurs. We will be the underdogs. But hey, we knocked out three Premier League oppositions in the Carabao Cup. Let's take out Spurs as well. Come on. And as we advance one day in the calendar, we have the match reschedule email confirmation, which does mean that the Carabao Cup final has been drawn. Spurs won the first leg at Carrow Road 2-1, so they should be through to the final realistically. You'd think so anyway. And that's the FA Cup. <laughs> Always get that wrong. And it's going to be... Yeah, there we are. Anyone? Oh, Norwich gave them a good battle though. 3-2 uh, to the final score in that tie. Uh, we won ours 4-1. And we will indeed take on Mauricio Pochettino. Spurs are currently their home. Uh, Wembley in the Carabao Cup final. That is going to be at the end of February, I do believe, isn't it? Or is it the start of March? end of February uh, and that will be coming in how many episodes time two episodes time so yeah in two episodes time episode number 15 I think uh, you'll see the Carabao Cup final against Spurs and I'll do a live Q&A for that game it's been a while since I've done a live q and I'll do a live Q&A for that one and so we're now going to jump into the second and final game of today's episode as we take on Sheffield United away at Bramwell Lane back in the championship feeling great after securing our progress to Carabao Cup final and quite a few changes to our team heading into this one as well 3-5-2 but lots of alterations uh, the same strike duo though, Codger and Brereton may not have scored at Turf Moor, but these two have been fantastic in the championship so far and thus they need to start together. So yeah, Sheffield United, second game today. Let's get another win and continue this really good streak. I am absolutely buzzing that after that win over Burnley at Turf Moor as Brereton, uh, sorry, Bustos scores his first goal for the club as well, just eight minutes in and runs to the away fans to celebrate as well. I think that went through the legs of the goalkeeper there as we take the lead against the Blade so early on this season in the game, not playing as well as they are in real life, but it's great to see the Argentine score his first goal. A lazy pass, Brereton wins it back, and Bustos just levers it right through the legs of Jamal and into the back of the net. 1-0 to Aston Villa, and our number two scores goal number one in an Aston Villa shirt. Come on. That is a really good feeling because he's had chances to score his first goals, just finishing hasn't really been there. And we signed him, you know, primarily to be a right back not a right midfielder but uh, he does have real ability when going forward especially when whipping crosses in but I do want to see, see him score a goal here and there as well uh, to be a threat when putting him in himself and that's a really good strike there from a tight angle and now Dempsey releases Brereton might need a teammate oh try to get back to Clint but he won't drop to him anyway Clint Dempsey oh what a save by Blackman and then Sheffield United scrambled it away with Basham they've got some suicidal defenders out there Tyler Adams on his first start fires it wide the post as well Snodgrass to Lansbury into Clint Dempsey and Dempsey's got a man out wide there can he pick him out yes he can lovely ball and now Bustos the goal scorer into Ben Brereton gets on the move gets some space gets a shot away oh god I just love this Aston Villa team Ben Brereton with another he's been in great form in January doubles our lead Sheffield United nil Aston Villa 2 and my cameras just died sorry about that but Brereton stops turns levers one from just outside the area 
and Jamal has absolutely no chance with that shot whatsoever. 2-0. Let me turn the camera back on. Sorry about that. I always forget. It's got a 30-minute recording threshold on my camera, so as soon as the 30 minutes come up, it just stops recording automatically. Um, there are ways, I think, to stop that from being the case, but uh, I, I don't know how you do it. But uh, anyway, it's 2-0, and uh, Brereton have a wonderful goal, and leading by two... Half an hour in, and this just sort of sums up how good we've been this season. We are the top scoring team in the league. We are top of the table by double digits. And right now, I can't see us being stopped in our pursuit of the championship title. I really can't. Earlier on in the season, yeah, we had a lot of shaky moments. There were lots of games where we, you know, were scraping wins and not playing too well. But, you know, since the turn of the 3 5 2, and in particular since the turn of December, we have just been almost unstoppable. When you think about it, we haven't lost a game in the championship since the beginning of December against Leeds at Ellen Road. We lost to Burton Albion, of course, in the cup, but no league losses since then. And, I mean, I, just, I can't see a team that's going to stop us. I hate to sound cocky and arrogant, but I really can't. As Dempsey goes very close with the weaker left foot. I just don't see what team can beat us right now. We're in such good form. We've kept the entire squad here despite bids for some of our more important players. And I can't see any team that's going to catch us up right now. We're just too good. Long way to go, of course. Don't get me wrong. And it is a physically demanding and very competitive division. So I guess I shouldn't really be saying that just yet. But either way, we are playing some really good football. No one's going to deny that. And um, it's, it's great to watch. Scoring goals for fun and picking up points left, right and centre. And let's not forget about the boys at the back. Christopher Sam with a really good block there. We've got good experienced defenders. John Terry, James Terry, uh, James Chester even. Uh, John Terry, James Chester and Christopher Samba. But then also good youngsters in Dale Fry and Eric Palmer-Brown. But Chet Evans has got Sheffield United back in the game. He's half the deficit. He just snuck in there, Chet Evans. He just totally snuck in. Like, everyone just lost him. And I tried to clear the ball away. And uh, he headed it past the man on the line. And into the... He, just, he completely just stunned me there, Chet Evans. I had no idea where he was. And uh, he just ghosted in and made it 2-1. So uh, they're back in the game. And hopefully... We are not going to let them get a point. If they do, I'll sound like a total moron for what I was saying in the first half. Good little player uh, back in the day, Chet Evans. Really, really good. And then, of course, the, the rape controversy was um, was something which I sort of strayed away from talking about. But I, I, I never I never understood like the backlash when he was going back to work, really. I couldn't understand that. It didn't really make much sense to me. I don't know whether you guys agree. Maybe you don't. I don't want to get too political on this channel. I, I try to stay away from that nowadays. But um, I've I've always been a firm believer that you know prison is for rehabilitation as well as to keep people out of danger. And uh, you know Chad Evans completed his sentence and, and he was going back to work. I never understood the backlash. You know Jessica Jessica Rennie saying oh, I'm going to pull my name out of the stand and whatnot. At the end of the day, I, I totally understand the... Uh, the, the well, I, don't, I wouldn't say I totally understand the outcry. I, I understand why some people might be a little bit uneasy about it, you know, wanting someone to be associated with their club. But he served his time. He's going back to work. You know, that's just how it is. Lafferty finds Lundstrom. Ball through to it. Evans, who's really stories. changed things for Sheffield United in the second half. And, oh, George Baldock never put one past me in school football, but almost put Sheffield United back on level terms there. Still 2-1. 12 minutes to go in the game. It is can we hang on to a big three points because right now it's all Sheffield United and the Blades are doing everything they can to stab us in the back as Sam Johnston makes a really good save we are hanging on in there hands free to Dempsey and he can send Kodji down left hand side there he's found him Jonathan holds it up gives it to Clint Dempsey, whoa, Dempsey, whoa, he came from USA to teach us how to play, he's done it again, Clint Dempsey wraps up the points and our second highest goal scorer is still in the hunt for the golden boot in his debut season at Villa Park and this one confirms the victory, a really heavy spell of pressure from the Blades in this second half, they played really well to be fair to them but we have to have the character, we have the resilience, Dempsey sent his man walking there, he had no idea where he was going and then curls the ball past Jamal Blackman and into the back of the net 3-1 12th of the year points in the bag good night Sheffield United oh yes baby another serious test of our character in this game and once again we have passed it with flying colours 3-1 will surely be the final score unless Brereton can find Kodja and oh Blackman's out of his goal this should be for I'll give it to Ben he's away from Lundstrom and this will do it Ben Brereton has the goal gaping and he's just going to put it into the open goal and make it 4-1 once again we have passed the test 
of how much character we have with flying colours. We were rocking, we were shaky, we were thinking, are Sheffield United going to come back from two goals down to claim a point? No. We score an extra couple of goals and that one confirms it. Points in the bag. Sheffield United 1, Aston Villa 4. And the final whistle is blown directly from kickoff as Kodja could have been through for a fifth goal. And that will do it. Final score at Bramwell Lane, 4-1 to Aston Villa. Great to get another win notched up in this really good run in January. Still haven't lost a league game since the Ellen Road match at the start of December. Another fantastic victory, another really important win. I have to say, though, this scoreline is very harsh on Sheffield United. Totally harsh, really. Um, they didn't deserve to lose 4-1. If anything, they deserved a point in this game. They played very, very well, particularly in the second half. Yes, of course, we were more clinical, and that's why we get the three points, but fair play to the Blaze. They really made me uh, sweat in that second half. That was a, that was a hard-fought victory, even though the scoreline suggests otherwise. But for man the match, I thought everyone played quite well. I thought Tyler Adams as well played all right in his debut. Um, Bustos got a goal and assist, but I'll give it to Ben Brereton, though. Two goals and an assist as well well as we'll hopefully extend our lead at the top of the table pick up another three points and I'll say it once again I can't see any team that's going to stop us from winning the title this year and after the game as well what about this for an email Clint Dempsey says hey boss I value my role at the club and I would try my best out there all the time we know that mate so thanks for playing me so much no worries Clint what an inspired signing Dempsey has been say it louder for the people in the back if you are managing a championship team pick Clint Dempsey up for your side he is unbelievable I, I know he's going to decrease in ratings in the first season but believe me it doesn't matter this guy has been quite remarkable all season long and so as we approach transfer deadline there we can see that a contract has been offered to Gabby Bong Lahore as QPR want to take him on a free transfer come the end of the season I'm still not sure whether I'm going to sign him to a new deal or not I I would like to, but I'm just not sure it's worth it, really. I guess we'll have to think about it, but if he wants to leave, he can leave. And so, as deadline day is now upon us, we have 10 hours to work our magic in transfer deadline day. I should say on transfer deadline day. And as you can see, we've got a lot of money in the wage budget right now to play the pre-contract game. And after I asked you guys for suggestions, I said to start the episode, after I asked you guys for suggestions, a lot of these suggestions were pre-contracts. So, I think what I'll do is sign a couple of players that you guys recommended and uh, bring a couple of players in. Now, one player I did see recommended recommended was Ross Barkley from Everton. The only problem is we don't have a scout report on the guy. He's 24 years old, as we know, going to join Chelsea in real life. Can play in a wide variety of positions, but I don't know how much he'll want in terms of his salary, because right now we are scouting him, uh, but there's no report unmasked whatsoever. And as it's deadline day, we won't be able to find out how much he's currently being paid at Goodison Park. So that'll be a gamble, but I did see the comment asking for Barkley, so I think I'll go in for him first and try and snap him up. I've got no idea what Barkley's on right now by the way but absolutely no idea at all so this is just a total gamble and it could totally backfire but uh it was joe uh, that asked me if i could sign him so uh thank you joe for the transfer suggestion i'll try my best to get him but uh, i'm not too sure how much he's gonna want we have agreed on two components in the contract crucial squad role four year deal he doesn't want to release clause either which i'm very happy about but this is going to be the really tricky part of this because I have absolutely no idea what he's on right now. Now, I can only speculate it's going to be 60 grand a week plus. I'm not sure he's into the under grand a week yet, but I don't want to offer something really low because you've got to remember we are still a championship side. Yes, of course, it's looking highly likely we'll be in the Premier League next year, but I don't want to offer him something which he'll find insulting. So we'll, we'll go over a 250 grand sign on bonus, 80 grand a week. I'm a little bit worried they're going to say no. Hopefully, they'll at least negotiate with us. Okay. All right, actually, they're going for a wage decrease. So I think I actually jumped the gun a little bit there and offered a bit too much money. But hey, play it safe. Play it safe. I want a quality player like Barkley in next season on the free. We'll remove that bonus of the appearances, 10 games. Uh, we'll be fine with a sign-on bonus, though. 79 grand a week. Is he going to accept it? Yes, he is. Ross Barkley is in for next season on the free transfer. Thank you for your suggestion, Joe. Wasn't the only one asking for Barkley, but that's a really, really, really great sign in there. Free transfer. We don't have his ability unmasked right now, but we know he's very good. He's signing for Chelsea in real life, and that's an absolute bargain. And because we still have so much money here, there's loads more to work with in this transfer deadline day. So I am going to pull out all the big guns on the deadline day. Why not? Why not? we got the cash. Let's spend it. Um, and I did see a comment from someone saying I should buy a new goalkeeper as Sam Johnson is, of course, on loan from Manchester United. Whilst I wouldn't mind bringing him back permanently, uh, we won't have a number one other than Gallini next season that could realistically do it in the Premier League. And I was thinking Pepe Reina wouldn't be a bad shout. Of course, the, uh, the former Liverpool goalkeeper uh, valued at 6.5 million on 33.5 grand a week right now. So not, you know, majorly high 
higher wages. He is 35 years old, but still 82 rated. And one of the reasons I really like Reyna is because his kicking is fantastic. Although in the game, it's actually not as good as I thought it was, only 80. But he's also got the GK long throw trait, which I really love, as I love goalkeepers that can distribute the ball really nicely, as I like them to start counter-attacks for me and retain possession. So I think Reyna would be a really good shout. An experienced pro, a veteran, a leader in the dressing room, and a really good cheap pickup. Let's bring him in. We're just going to give him a one-year deal. And uh, I think we'll let him go come the end of the contract if he doesn't decide to retire. And uh, they're okay with that. And uh, we'll disregard the release clause as well. And he does want 44 grand a week. So it is a wage increase than what he's on right now. However, it's actually not much more. And when you look at our budget as well, we've got so much money to work with. I don't really feel the need to try and get him down. Um, although I wouldn't mind trying to save a little bit of cash if we could. So what I think we'll do is we'll, we'll duck the wages down. So let's go, let's go 40 grand a week. Uh, and we'll duck the sign-on bonus down to 175 grand. And hopefully that won't backfire and I won't ask for more money. Um... Wait, was that what they were asking for? I can't remember. But 44 grand a week, that's fine. That's fine. And um, yeah, that's that's totally fine. No, that was their original offer. That's totally fine. 44 grand a week, 185 grand sign-on bonus. Our number one for next year, an experienced pro, a veteran leader in the dressing room, and really good with his feet and his hands as well. Pepe Reina, you're going to join Ross Barkley next season and Ashley Young. Welcome to the club next year. I'm looking forward to you. Ya, ya, Torre. Ya, ya. Ya, 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 ya. That'll be fun. Uh, Maran Fellaini from Manchester United or or Fernando Torres, who I once had in a Swansea football manager save, and that was a lot of fun. I'd love to get him next season uh, on a free transfer. Four-star weak foot, three-star skills. Not quite as quick as he was back in his Liverpool days, but um, I'd, I'd love one of those three. Let's go in for let's go in for Fellaini first and uh, see what Maran wants. All three of these players would be amazing if we could pull these off, man. Seriously, I just you know for me, I know that a lot of people when they play Karuma, they just buy the younger players because from a strategic point of view. It makes total sense. There is no benefit to having senior players. When I talk about them being veterans and leaders in the dressing room, that's just made up. It doesn't actually have any effect on your players at all. But for me, he only wants a one-year deal. Really? He's getting at least two years, mate. Um, but for me, I just I think it's really fun. It's not necessarily a realism thing. I always say I don't play for realism, but I just find it really, really fun to to do things a little bit different and uh, and to sign players that um, you know just just add character to your team. Do you know what I mean? It's good to have a good blend of youth and experience. So uh, the 19.5 mil release clause, I wasn't too happy about. But oh, you are having a laugh, mate. You are having a laugh. Listen, Maran, I think you've been unfairly treated at Manchester United when you first came in. You were a scapegoat with David Moyes, but there is no way you are worth that sort of money here at Aston Villa. Um, no way. No way. No absolute way, mate. You're not getting that sort of deal. Uh, we will try and get him down if we can to around 80... No, let's go... Really? 500 grand? No, 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 no. I would take a big pay cut, mate, or you're not coming in. You're not going to get first team football at Old Trafford. Take a big pay cut or you're not coming in. That's not going to work. We came here hoping to finalise the transfer, but your revised offer is disappointing and fell he no longer has any interest in joining your club. Fair enough. I don't care. You're not getting that sort of cash here, mate. No way. But we still have Yaya Torre or Fernando Torres that we could sign. I think Torres would be a really fun signing as well. We want him on a two-year deal if preferable. And they're okay with that. Uh, no release clause as well. That's good news. And as for the money, what are they going to want? Now, I'm going to offer him what he's on right now, which is 60 grand a week at the Vicente... Co oh, no, moved, haven't they? I forgot what the stadium's called now. But um, we... What is the Fletcher Madrid Stadium called? Can you comment below? Because I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, the new one. It's the... Um, Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to remember it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. Uh, 60 grand a week, and we'll give him a 200 grand sign-on bonus. I'm, I'm a little bit worried he's going to walk out and say that's a bit insulting, but... Oh, no, he's fine with it. He's totally fine with it. 60 grand a week, 200 grand. Well, I was expecting him to negotiate. Instead, he's fine with 60 grand a week and 200 grand sign. That's a bargain. Fernando, I love you, mate. That's brilliant. I mean, I say it's a bargain. I should remember what year it is. He is 33 years old. He is 80 rated. But either way, I'm surprised at that. I thought they were going to say, no, that's not what we're after. We'll take 70 grand and 500 grand sign on bonus. But no, Torres is coming back to England, baby. And he's going to join us at Villa Park next season. And that, I think, should mean 
Kane. We have enough for Yaya Torre as well. Let's make a full signing on deadline day. Let's bring him in. Yeah, 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 Torre, Colo, Colo, Colo. Oh, this will be a brilliant So This has been an amazing deadline day. We are going to make four incredible signings on transfer deadline day. Ross Barkley, Pepe Reina, Yaya Torre, and also Fernando Torres as well. It would have been better if it was 2014, but, you know, it's it's still brilliant stuff. Uh, he only wants a one-year deal. I want him on a two-year deal, though, preferably. And he can stay in City retires. Excellent news. Uh, no release clause, of course. And as for the wages, this is the tricky part, because I don't want to give him exactly what he's on. I'm looking for him to take a pay cut, the Ivorian, in order to come here and be a first-team regular. But I don't think he'll take under 100 grand. So what we'll do is we'll start at 80... 2.5 now say 125 oh god no definitely not uh that would be a pay cut that would be unbelievable uh 82.5 grand a week and the sign on bonus will go 200 grand a week oh my maths is terrible i can't even find a decimal point uh it's my vision that's worse 82 and a half grand a week 200 grand sign on bonus crucial squad stats two year deal okay he's not okay with that but he's okay with 87 grand a week uh 910 grand sign on bonus will remove the appearance bonus and I'm okay with that contract if he is. I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Play fair, mate. Play fair. Come on, take it down. Go to at least 100 grand a week. Go to, go to 100 grand a week. That's still a really good contract. Bloody hell, I'll take 100 grand a year. I'll take 100 grand every, I'll take 100 grand every three years. Uh, four years, probably. But uh, 100 grand a week. No, would I? Yes, of course I would. 100 grand a week. 910 grand sign-on bonus. Yeah, yeah, Torre. Go on, accept that deal, mate. Yes, get in. Yeah, 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 yeah. What an incredible deadline day. Four incredible, amazing signings on transfer deadline day. Yaya yeah, Torre coming in next season. Fernando Torres coming in next season. Ross Barkley coming in next season. And Pepe Reina also coming in next season as well. Four unbelievable deals. Let's not forget Ashley Young coming in next season too. And we signed Tyler Adams in the window. And there's still money to work with as well. Obviously, because we don't pay their wages until next season as well, we still have loads of money to work with too. But I don't want our budget to take too big of a hammering heading into next year. It's going to take a massive hammering now, bringing in those four players. And um, we're only paying the sign-on bonuses to begin with. But we don't we don't want to see our wage budget and our transfer budget get destroyed heading into the new season. So I think with 10 hours to go, we might just leave it there. We might just leave it there. I've brought in four great players for next season. Three really good veterans, and I'm I'm totally fine with this. I'm, I'm happy leaving it right there. I'm pretty sure that is how that works, by the way. It, it can't be that you give them the money straight away, because they agree a pre-contract, not an actual contract signing, because they come in next season. So, yeah, um, brilliant stuff. That was absolutely fantastic. Four players coming in next season on free transfers. Delighted with that. Uh, signing Barkley, obviously a great suggestion, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him next season. Reina, uh, obviously, uh, Yaya Torre and Fernando Torres as well. Lest we forget Ashley Young too. Oh, come on, Mill, we'll do some business. You've got to stay up. Um, but either way, great transfer deadline day. Fantastic January window. And right now, everything is coming up roses for Aston Villa. We've got a Carabao Cup final to look forward to at the end of the season. We are top of the table and 14 points clear. We haven't lost a game in the championship since December. I don't see any negatives with this Aston Villa team at the moment. There is 17 games to go, and it's just been so far an amazing season, and, and long may it continue. So a quick look at our academy. You can see the players in the youth team right now and how they're getting on. I'm going to release Connor Mitchell, but I'll tell you what, that kid there, Toby Lewis, looks absolutely fantastic. 57 overall, and his potential is now up to 91 to 94. I have had very few players of our potential ranges that high before. He looks absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and even the youth team's looking fantastic as well. So I think we'll end it there because uh, I need to lie down after completing those fantastic signings. And uh, what a fantastic episode. What a thrilling deadline day. And what an amazing run it's been for Aston Villa over the past few episodes. So, yeah, that will end today's episode. Oh, Mill with four points off safety. Come on, lads. That will end today's episode of Career Mode. So, a big thank you for watching, guys. Really, really have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love. Have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.